Hi, and welcome to yet another installment of my household robot build. I'm Joe, and last time we left off with a rolling chassis. I was very pleased with how it performed. Not only did it handle the indoor environment it was designed for, but could run outdoors as well. Completely thrilled with this development, I went on to start designing the other pieces of the chassis that hold the battery in suspension, and at that point I realized there were still too many unknowns. Namely, the shape of this robot. Gort, which is my robot's name, cuts the striking figure of a traffic cone with a head on it. It's somewhat reminiscent of the movie Robot Wally, only really tall. One of my viewers suggested I call it Slendy, which I thought was actually pretty funny. But this form, though it might work for a robot companion or pet of some sort, is certainly not useful. It can't manipulate its world, unless it knocks something over. So now I'm faced with design decisions about what it should actually look like. The original platform was developed simply for learning how to do navigation, which I'm not quite done with, but pretty close. But it is time for a rebuild because I'll need the extra sensors this chassis will offer. There have been a number of concepts that I've played with, and I would like to have this robot be able to pick up items that are on tables and such, or even countertops, which necessitates its height of about one meter, which is about 2.16 cubits. The taller I make the robot, the more stability becomes an issue. So I wanted to keep it as short as possible, making the head just able to see over the countertops. To manipulate something on the countertop, the arms would have to be pretty much at head height, which is doable, though less than ideal. But the problem there is, how does it pick up things off the floor? It would need to be able to bend in the middle. So I thought perhaps I could have the arms on a rail that could move up and down. Or maybe the entire torso of the robot could telescope. But then I thought of Boston Dynamics Robot Dog with the single arm that has the gripper on the end kind of like a head with a mouth. Now our household pets that we know and love tend to grab things with their mouth. And this seems quite natural to us. So this is an interesting solution. My brother and I had a brainstorming session about it and thought, well, what if we had just this base with an arm with the head on the end of the arm and a gripper right there like a mouth? It would have the shape of a goose. This would be sort of a gooseoid robot instead of a humanoid robot. Gooseoid doesn't sound great. Oh, a male goose is called a gander. This is a gandroid. You've heard it from here first. This is a gandroid robot. Though the neck will be simplified, it won't have quite so many axes of freedom. It will resemble more of an industrial robot in type. But my design work on the main base was stopped because of that. I really need to think this idea out. And so I started working with the sensors. As I said before, in the two trucks on this robot alone, there are seven sensors each. This is my array of sensors that will be used on the chassis. I'll start with the limit switches. These limit switches will be pushed by the bumpers and let the robot know when it's run into something. They're very simple and reliable units. The next sensor is mounted vertically on the chassis, in front of the front wheel, and behind the rear wheel, and kind of off to the side. It's an infrared reflection sensor. Basically, it sends out infrared light, and it sees how much returns to it. This makes it very good for very close optical proximity. Since none of the light is lensed, it's actually affected far more by distance than it is by the color of what's below it, which is good. This way, the robot will see if there's a drop-off right in front of the wheel. It'll be kind of last minute, but it's still good information. Now also attached directly to the fender will be this vibration sensor. It's basically a small post inside with a spring around it, and if it gets hit hard enough, that spring will contact the post. This will give the robot a sense of impact, so the bumper will know if it's pushing into something soft like a pillow, or hitting something hard like the baseboard of a wall. I don't know how useful this data will be yet, but it's useful to humans if your toe hits a pillow while well, your walking cadence changes to compensate. But if your toe hits the leg of the coffee table, you're going to act completely differently. Now mounted in the outer sensor holder by the hub of the wheel is an AS5600 magnetometer. By the way, thank you to one of my commenters for correcting me on my pronunciation. I was calling it a magnometer. Apparently I've never heard the word before and never read it correctly either. So it's a magnetometer. Thank you. Another sensor involved are load cells. These measure the amount of force being applied to them. They will be used in three places, and from them I'll be able to derive how much weight is on each wheel. Now this is critical for some of the balance algorithms. Yes, this robot is not meant to balance actively, 
but there are cases when it will still need to. If it goes over a bump, gets pushed or knocked by something, or it's on a slope, it needs to know how much weight is on the different corners of the vehicle to make sure it doesn't just tip itself over by stopping too quick or something like that. With these, I was particularly impressed with the clarity of the signal and its resolution. I think they're going to work very well. Another sensor in the chassis will be an MPU 6050 IMU, Inertial Measurement Unit. This will help the robot know what the chassis is doing separate from the head, though the head will be king in figuring out which direction it's pointing. The last sensor I have in mind is a two-dimensional LiDAR. It works like a conventional radar screen, and this one's going to be angled downward slightly so that it will scan the floor in front of it. That'll give the robot a very clear picture of the terrain it's just about to roll over, as well as warn it of cliffs coming up. And at this point I must circle back to those IR distance sensors, and mention that they also will work as a brake beam sensor. And I will use a few of these mounted horizontally, aiming outward, to help the robot home in on its charging dock. Because yes, it'll have a charging dock. It just seems impractical for me to have to plug it in to charge it up every day when I want it to do its job autonomously. Instead, it'll be able to return to its charging dock whenever its duties are finished and make sure its battery is full. With these decisions made, I started to mount all the sensors, putting them in their proper places, and yes, holding some of them down with hot glue. It works perfectly well. Don't judge me, guys. This is still a prototype. I'm not completely happy with the fit of this fender, though it's also just an initial prototype. It'll get nicer looking, but also I have to make it so that it moves a bit more freely. Either that or add some return springs on it so it can't stick and continue to think it's hitting something when it really isn't. The magnetometers, which I'm using for odometry from the drive wheels, also were too far away to sense the magnet that I had simply stuck on the end of the motor shaft. So I 3D printed up some little holders that would hold the magnet much closer and then tested it to make sure that the magnet was centered. I have found with these chips that if the magnet is offset, then as the motor spins, the output from the chip becomes somewhat, I would call it elliptical. The counts tick by quicker at some parts of the rotation than others. When I tested it, it outputted some very nice sawtooth patterns, which means that the encoder count was incrementing linearly through the turn of the wheel. After carefully routing the wires and marking them to make sure I know which one is which, the wheel truck started to look very nice. At that point, I decided to build something of a universal chassis plate. It has various holes in it that I can bolt other things to, so that I can just simply continue to move forward. This chassis plate will hold the load cells, and everything will kind of sit on top of it. After printing it out, I uh, printed it again, because I got something wrong and it didn't fit. And since I like to finish each week with the robot working in some capacity, I'm going to have to just simply apologize and say, you'll have to watch next week. See you later.